So yesterday I came across this tweet, which is possibly a screenshot from Next.js Conf itself, which has been added by Theo. And it's an interesting code snippet, right? If you take a look at what's happening here, there's also a mistake in this code snippet, bonus points if you can catch that. But in general, this is a very interesting code snippet and a lot of things are going on here, right? From a bot controller to set immediate and, you know, promises, all of this and React DOM and all of that also. So this video is not exactly about React. It's about this JavaScript concept of what's happening over here and if you go into the replies it doesn't help right because a lot of confusion is there a lot of people are guessing different different things so I just wanted to take a moment and cover this from my point of view of the things I remember from event loop and what this actually means what this snippet actually is right now next conf is not live like the videos are not available yet and I also did not watch it so I don't have a resource to point you at but let me do my best to make sense of this snippet for you so first things first let me just take out this out side of here and put it in my TL draw instance and now we'll try to make sense of what's going on over here right now in order to make sense of this before you actually understand what's going on here you have to understand a bit about event loop in JavaScript and in node.js specifically because this is running on server so what event loop basically is if you don't know about it it actually deserves a 30 minute 40 minute video of its own I think I did a video on event loop a few years back also but you know happy to do it again with some more information this time but just to give you a quick TLDR of event loop think of it as something like this where this is obviously this is not the case but imagine if you have a loop like this right what will happen is that this loop will keep on running so this loop over here this loop will keep on running right so you can just keep on running it continuously 24 7 however you want so sort of something like this now within this particular loop there are a lot of events that happen right inside JavaScript from executing your synchronous code to executing micro task queues to executing task queues which is also known as macro task queues so all of that is happening in an event loop, right? If you are inside browser, then there is a place where, you know, the browser also paints on the screen, like what you have, all the modifications you have made. So that's also like part of like request animation frame. So RAFQ, right? So a lot of things are there. I don't want to discuss event loop in very depth in this video because then it will be a very long video. But what's happening over here is that what you have to remember is let's say you start executing a code like const A is equal to 100, const B is equal to 2. 100, right so you start your module like this so if this is let's say index.js you keep on writing these lines all of this is executing in your main thread right so it starts from your main thread now what you're going to do immediately is something like set timeout let's say you want something in javascript you know if you want something like after a few seconds you will have this code written here right set timeout is for example one of the functions which use the task on a task queue so it doesn't just immediately invoke it and doesn't like you know invoke it exactly after five seconds also so it queues it on the task queue that's why you get that guarantee right if you have heard about it that with set timeout you are guaranteed to execute it after five seconds but there is no certainty that when it would execute after five seconds right it depends on how busy your main thread is so it might as well just execute slightly later after five seconds also this is also the reason if you do something like set timeout and you write a function and you know you just give a zero over here it mathematically it might mean to you that this code over here which you have written over here this code might just execute at the same time right but the way JavaScript is built it would not be executed immediately it would be executed in the next tick so what is a tick basically a tick is whenever every time like the event loop starts again right so every time it starts again there is you can call that as a tick so then within the event loop there are two concepts quickly just describing them the first one is a task queue which is also like macro task queue and the second concept is a micro task queue which is well micro task itself there are certain things you can do to show schedule functions in both these queues right and both of these queues have slightly different behavior again like a lot of things can be done over here but I just want to not stretch this video a lot so let's just quickly cover task queue and micro task queue so task queue in general what happens over here is that functions like set timeout and set immediate schedule the functions inside task queue so if I have to write what functions go over here let me just make some space so there are task queue which is micro task set timeout set interval also goes over here and set immediate also goes over here right so these are like task queue functions then in terms of micro task what you have are promises right and then there is another queue by the way and the reason I'm keeping it separate I'll just tell you in a second and that is like a process dot next tick queue right so there is a function in node.js that you can use which is process dot next tick which also allows you to schedule tasks on a new queue now there are differences between set immediate and set timeouts scheduling as well but I'll not go that deep into 
this this specific video let's try to understand with just this information which we have right so over here we have process or next tick so what happens is that there are three queues like this now whenever something happens like let's say if you have a code let me just write javascript code which looks something like this right so if we have something like const a is equal to or console.log hello then i have a set immediate of console.log world or let's just make it one two just to keep it simple then let's say i have a promise dot resolve then console log three right so what's going on over here is that let's try to figure out what thing goes where right so console.log one which is the simplest thing would be logged first right so it is just running in the main thread then you have something called a set immediate which schedules task on the macro task queue or the task queue right so it goes inside this queue nothing is executing right now it just goes inside this queue then this task which we have over here the promise dot resolves dot then task basically because you know this would just immediately resolve this task would go over here right inside the promises queue inside the micro task queue now when the event loop runs right so this loop will end over here then the next tick would begin so when the next tick starts what is going to happen is that your javascript engine will try to take a look at each of these queue and process some or all of these elements right so what it'll do is it'll, it'll say first of all it starts with the process dot next tick queue that is why i kept it separate so first things first it'll see that if you have scheduled anything in the process dot next tick so if we have something like let's say if i have process dot next tick and let's say if i have console log four so what's going to happen now is if i draw another square this task over here would go inside this queue right process dot next tick queue so what's going to happen is your event loop over here if i bring this a little down so the event loop which we have over here it will start by checking the process dot next tick queue first right so i'll just label this blue i probably can't label it as individual colors but anyway so what's going to happen is that this would be the first queue which would be checked that do you have any tasks or not if you have any task in process dot next tick queue they will be executed first right then comes the micro task queue right and with micro task queue the interesting thing is that all the tasks would be completed right so if you have let's say another example over here and uh, let me just move it a little down if you have another example over here something like this then both of the, these tasks are inside micro task queue right so if i edit this as five for example so if this is five then three and five both the console logs are technically inside micro task queue so what's going to happen over here is that these two tasks will be scheduled in the micro task queue which would be executed next so over here your event loop will execute the micro task queue tasks as the next thing then it will take up tasks from the macro task queue but with macro task queue it doesn't take all the tasks so let's say if you have another set immediate over here which is scheduled so it will not take that task like it will not just consume all the tasks directly so what this means is let's say if we had another set immediate just after this i'm not putting it now because it's already like a little bit messy but if you had like a console log of six after this it would not execute two and six both but it would in the case of the micro task queue right so there is that subtle difference which i was talking about and once all of this is done it will start its normal event loop right so again just to verify this i just quickly copied this code and pasted it over here and if we try to you know put the terminal on the right and if i try to run this over here you will see the output we get is okay let we can just get rid of the quotes and the output we get is one four three five two right so one is expected because this is running in the obviously in the main thread then we get four right because like we discussed process dot next is the first queue which is picked once the event loop iteration completes and over here you can see that there is nothing else basically after this console log once so the event loop is completed and it just sticks again so we get four as the next thing then we have micro task right so you see that we complete both the micro task in a single go three and five are logged together right because the micro task queue like i mentioned to you they are completed together right so all the tasks in the micro task queue would be completed and in fact micro task queue tasks themselves can schedule more tasks inside micro task itself so there is a possibility of you know you just creating sort of an infinite recursion over here although it's limited there are certain safeguards available in the runtime itself but you can like sort of recursively create micro tasks within micro tasks once 3 5 is logged then the macro task or the task queue is picked and you get a console log 2 right so now what's happening over here let's try to understand let's try to make sense of the actual question in the picture now we have all this information set immediate we know schedules the task on a macro task queue right so what's happening over here is that if we take a look we have set immediate in two phases right we have two set immediate calls the first call executes a function as pre-render and you're passing like a react component over here right so what's happening over here is that you have something like you know pre-render as a function call renders the react component right or maybe i don't know like whatever it does creates html out of it or stream starts you 
know a stream or returns a stream or whatever it could be anything right this function starts executing right and when does it start executing on the next take right so it will start executing over here now we know that because set immediate is inside a macro task queue and it doesn't behave like a micro task that means that your first function this function this execution unit will get a full tick that is like it will get a full tick of execution of the event loop right it will not just execute this controller dot abort thing immediately so just to clarify this what do i mean by this let's say if you have a pre-render like this and then you have an abort function like this right so what's going to happen in this specific case in the first tick of the loop this function would run and in the second tick of the loop only then javascript would execute the second abort so what this means is that effectively if the first tick schedules any further micro tasks or next tick they would also be executed right before we call abort that basically means if this pre-render function is something like function pre-render and it's doing something like process dot next process next tick you know something like this or if it is doing something like you know promise dot resolve of something you know any any sort of micro task scheduling if it's doing that or if it's scheduling it on the process dot next tick queue it would run before the abort call runs now you might not need that if you don't need that then you don't need set immediate as a separate thing right or you can just schedule it on the process dot next tick queue if you don't want the functions inside this to run but if you do want it then you have to schedule it on the macro task queue so effectively this is how it works and i'm assuming the reason we are doing all of this is because again like it depends on how the pre-render function probably is implemented you have to see the source code and all but it's most likely doing some sort of scheduling or some sort of things on the micro task queue which needs to be executed or process dot next tick queue and then once it's done you call controller dot abort so that it discards any sort of pending task and what that pending task could be it could be a fetch request it could be a database call it could be anything right so with react server components and all of these things what you can do now is that within the function itself you know you can make fetch requests like this so over here what's going to happen is that it's going to start the fetch request in a micro task fashion and it's going to return once you have gotten the response but if you pass an abort controller signal over here which they are passing right so i'm assuming like this abort controller signal goes deep into every single async task inside the pre-render function so if you pass this what you are effectively doing is canceling the request after one tick has happened and once all of the things have rendered so you're effectively like in the pre-rendering thing that's how pre-rendering works right where you create sort of a shell you don't get all the data and all what you don't want is just performing the network request but what you do want is that you want to create like a suspense enabled sort of shell out of it so that's what's happening over here now of course set immediate if you take a look at mdn's documentation it's deprecated so this window.set immediate is deprecated and in fact it's not even supported by any browsers but it works in node.js right i'm actually curious to see if the example which we posted has any differences in node and bun i certainly hope not because otherwise it will be extremely bad in terms of like fundamentally how the languages are operating so node let's just try to see gives us 14352 bun gives us 14352 and dino i don't have dino okay so let's hope that dino also gives us the same thing so yeah let me know what do you think about this video very quick video there are a lot of interesting parts which we can discuss about event loop but this is how the gist of it works so i hope you learned something new in this one that's all for this video i will see you in the next video really soon Thank you.